Well, hello there. So the PlayStation 5, eh? Next-gen consoles, ray tracing, eh? Exciting, no? Yeah, the PlayStation 5 has been announced and it's coming next year, and if rumours are to be believed in almost exactly a year, because the latest noises are that Sony's PS5 is going to be released on November 20th, 2020. But why am I, a dedicated PC person on a dedicated PC channel, talking about the PS5? For the views, innit? But also because the PS5 is, like the PS4 and Xbox One before it, just a PC. Since AMD was contracted to create all the hardware for both Sony and Microsoft's next-gen consoles, they've simply been low-powered PCs packaged for the masses who struggle with a mouse and keyboard, and you know, like to sit on a sofa and game on a big screen TV. But if the PS5 is still just a PC, and is expected to cost $499, can we build a gaming PC with the same essential specs and performance as a PS5 for the same price today? No, of course we can't, that's completely impossible, because there's no way we can match the purchasing power of a company like Sony who can point to almost guaranteed millions of sales to back up driving costs of components down, and will also happily run us a loss on the whole deal for years too. We simply can't go to Amazon and demand special rates just because we want to build us a cheap PC that's capable of ray tracing. There's also the fact that the hardware inside the PS5 hasn't actually all been released or even realised as yet. Certainly no AMD graphics card can do the sort of ray tracing we're expecting to sit within either the Xbox Scarlet or PlayStation 5. But if you want to get close to the expected specs of a PS5, then you're looking at spending around a grand for the privilege. And that's because there's actually some pretty tasty tech in the upcoming console. Yes, $499 is a lot of money for a games console, but it's not a lot of money for a gaming PC. And considering the specs of the new PlayStation and equally the new Xbox, that's a pretty darn good price too. The PS5 is coming with a custom AMD processor, rumoured to be codenamed Gonzalo, or for whatever that means, and it will be an 8-core equivalent of the Ryzen 3000 processors that have arrived in the AMD Zen 2 generation on the PC. Whether it will contain simultaneous multi-threading to deliver a full 16 threads of compute power, we're not 100% sure, but it would be strange not to. Alongside that 7nm Zen 2 CPU part will be a similarly 7nm GPU based on the Navi graphics architecture. It's potentially an updated version compared with the RDNA silicon inside the RX 5700 series, however. Why? Because Sony has confirmed that it's also going to have hardware-based ray tracing built into the AMD spec. That would hint to the use of the RDNA 2.0 architecture, something speculated to make an appearance at CES. Obviously, we can thank NVIDIA's leather-clad CEO Jensen Huang for that. He confessed recently that it was all thanks to the green team introducing ray tracing to the gaming consciousness that made Sony and Microsoft stutter step and include ray tracing in their next generation consoles. Thanks Jensen! With the AMD GPU and Sony's proclivity for graphics memory as system memory, you can expect to see the PS5 also rocking up with 8GB of GDDR6 this time around. But potentially the biggest game changer for the PS5 is the inclusion of an SSD with raw bandwidth higher than any SSD available for PCs. Quite the claim, eh? Though that was made by Mark Kearney before the Ryzen 3000 chips came out, delivering PCIe 4.0 to the PC, so that probably doesn't ring quite as true now. But with a PS5 likely coming with a 500GB PCIe 4 SSD, that'd be quite a game changer for console gamers. Oh, and there's a 4K Blu-ray player because Sony just won't admit that optical media is dead. Sadly, there's no way we can get to the level of the PS5's potential hardware or its promised performance for the paltry sum of $499. Certainly not now, anyway. But by the time the PS5 actually comes out, we will have whole new generations of hardware at our disposal, and that will push performance up and prices down. So, when we get to November 2020, could we build a performance equivalent 499 PC? The custom AMD system on a chip that's going into the PS5 is unlikely to have a PC equivalent, even once the Ryzen 4000 APUs launch early next year, so we'll need both a CPU and a discrete GPU. The processor is doable. We'll have 8-core Ryzen 4000 CPU supporting the Zen 3 architecture by November next year, which ought to push the price of the current Ryzen 7 3700X, an octa-core Zen 2 chip, down to around the same level as where the 2700X is at right now, which is less than $200. But that's still overkill for our PC Station 5. The PS5 might have an 8-core 16-thread CPU, but it won't be running at the same clock speed. That fat development kit chassis is a lot different to how the eventual console will look, which means it won't have the same level of cooling available either. So we can probably make do with a 6-core 12-thread Ryzen 5 3600 and get the same level of gaming performance because of its higher clock speed. And by next year that could be a $100 chip like the Ryzen 5 2600 is today. So we're already shaving cash off the build price then but not enough, because getting a GPU like what the PS5 is seemingly promising, well, that's going to be tough. We don't really know what the GPU part of the PS5 equation is going to be, 
but we can work on it being around double the raw performance of the PS4 Pro. Going by those numbers, we're talking about a graphics card with around 8 teraflops of compute power. At its boost frequency, that's pretty much what the RX 5700 offers. Though there is still the chance that the PS5's GPU will be closer to 10 teraflops, which will be a struggle to match for the money on our PC. Our graphics cards sure are pricey. The other problem is that ray tracing conundrum. Sure, the RX 5700 will trace rays with the best of them in the Neon Noir CryEngine demo, but even with Vulcan rays, we've still not seen an AMD GPU run proper real-time ray tracing. That will change next year though with the RDNA 2.0 architecture, which means an RX 5700 just won't cut it in this build. But a next-gen RDNA 2.0 GPU might be available for the PC then, and the standard gen-on-gen -gen performance uplift we could normally expect could push an RX 5700 equivalent card down the price ladder. So let's be hugely optimistic and call that a $200 card. Hell, if Nvidia's Ampere comes out around Gamescom next year with stellar ray tracing and rasterizing performance and is a better value prospect than the RTX 20 series cards, then AMD might have to be that aggressive on pricing. Okay, so we have a powerful GPU and CPU combo that optimistically costs $300. Very optimistically. That leaves us around $200 to grab a chassis, PSU, 4K Blu-ray player, a 500GB PCIe 4.0 SSD, 8GB of DDR4 memory and AM4 motherboard. We can forget spending on a Windows license because the PS5 runs on Linux and we can get that for free. All it'll cost is our sanity as we try and manage the vagaries of the terminal and getting Proton to work okay. Still, even saving on the OS, getting all that under $200 is impossible. But you can forget the 4K Blu-ray player because optical media is dead, man. And a PCIe 3 SSD will be fine because PCIe 4 is just phallus waving stuff right now. Which means you can get everything else for under the $280 mark, which really ain't bad. It's uh, unfortunately all told that still ain't $499. So even with my super optimistic and utterly unrealistic future pricing calculations, we're looking at a nearly $600 PC build with fewer cores than the PS5 and no admittedly pointless optical disk drive. That really does highlight the level of buying power Sony has. Damn those economies of scale. The optimistically priced PC we've spec'd out would easily match the PS5 in terms of straight performance though, and smash it in terms of super versatility too. But putting together that build would be a lot more effort than dropping some cash on a next-gen console, and you wouldn't have to drive your blood pressure through the roof trying to learn Linux either. Hmm. So uh, basically what I'm saying is that uh, if you need a new gaming machine this time next year and only have $499 to spend, Probably best buy a PS5. Jeez, I'm so sacked. Well, thanks for watching. Maybe you've enjoyed these ramblings, maybe not. Whatever. Give us a like and subscribe and all that stuff. <laughs>